morning, church. Aren't you glad that God woke you up this morning? Aren't you glad that God woke you up this morning with a purpose? I know I am. Today is Fourth Sunday, which is Youth Day, and I thank you guys for coming out and worshiping with us today. And our opening prayer is by Marvin Alls. Today that you just let your spirit roam freely throughout the entire place of us to be cleansed, healed, and delivered from whatever it is that we're facing. We ask that you just keep us and bless us first and second service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now we'll have our praise and worship by the best best team praise team I know. We the best job. Good morning, how y'all doing? Uh, how many of y'all love God more than anything? Good morning, thank you, Lord. Lord, I love you more. 
after he's forgotten it. Has God done anything for you this morning? Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, I love you more than anything, God. In spite of what's going in my life, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Everything. We have to be willing to sacrifice the things that we used to do. We can't do it anymore. Come on, Jocelyn. We have to keep willing to push forward. We have to be consistent in our walk in Christ. Because if not, then we're just going to be left behind like everybody else. Jesus. Even for myself, I have to pick myself up. And I have to keep moving because no one is waiting for me. God is waiting for me at the end of the road. I can't keep going back to the same old people. I can't keep turning back to the old people. But if you just hold on, if you just hold on to a little bit of faith, if you just keep holding on, if you just keep pressing on God, God will help you. I promise you, He will help you. You have to seek. You have to seek Him.
forgive and forget. Yes, the person hurt you. Yes, they put you to pain. Yes, they made you cry. But if you keep pushing and you keep forgiving and you keep loving on the person, God will do wonders. He will handle them, but God will do wonders through you if you just keep forgiving and forgetting. Now we'll have our doxology. your hands for God today. Can we please all stand for our doxology, holy, holy, holy. shall not be confounded. Right. Welcome to my Zion where you were love here or what? Be there. And ain't nobody gonna run you off. Amen. So today is Youth Sunday. Let's give it up for us. You oh y'all can do better than that. Amen. Every first Sunday is our communion Sunday. Amen. Every second Sunday is our Women's Sunday. Women, where you at this morning? And every third Sunday is our Men of Abraham. And like today, we, we celebrate our youth. Amen. Every Monday night is the Men of Abraham prayer and Bible study. Amen. Men of Abraham, can you please raise your hand? 
these gentlemen with their hand raised. If you're not on the men's line for Monday night, please see one of them to get on the line. Amen. Every Tuesday night is the praise team debriefing and Bible study and practice. Amen. Amen. Every Wednesday night is our youth Bible study. That is at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. And our awesome, powerful Bible study on Thursday night. Let's give it up for it. Amen. Upcoming events. We have our seniors helping through Christ Outreach Ministry. Save the day, July 3rd. Um, it says we will not be having, we will not have our planning meeting because of the 4th of July holiday. Amen. 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 Also, July the 15th, 2023 at 8 a.m., they're having their seniors yard sale. Amen. Amen. It's at here at Mount Zion. It's food, drinks, and games. Um, July 17th at noon is the Seniors Outreach Ministry. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor Murray speaking engagement. Today at 3.30, we'll be traveling over to True Vine Missionary Baptist Church off of Rhodes Avenue. Pastor needs all hands, I mean all hands on deck this afternoon. Bus will leave at 3.10. So, if you're riding the bus, please be here promptly. Amen. If you're driving your own vehicle, please prepare yourself to ride with us. Amen. Amen. July the 23rd at 4 p.m., Pastor will be preaching at Greater St. Paul AMA Church off of Paramore. Amen. Amen. October the 22nd, 2023 at 10 a.m., Pastor will be preaching in Tangelo. Amen. And then in November, Pastor will be preaching at Have Faith Outreach at 11.30 a.m. Amen. Come, please govern yourselves accordingly. If you need these dates, please see me after service and I can get with you one on one. And I will place one actually on the bulletin board back there. Is there any visitors today? If so, please stand. We want to honor you at Mount Zion. We're going to honor anyway. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. Some of y'all been sitting down all morning. I need you on your feet this morning. So since we're all family, can you touch the name and say, it's good to see you. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Tell your neighbor, it's good to see you. Come on. Say, welcome to the service of the Lord. And welcome to Mount Zion.
can. We haven't got that fit yet, so wait till I get that fixed. All right, if you have an electronic payment, if you'll step to the back hallway. My nephew back there, Brother Marco, he'll help you to our finance room there. Amen. If you need an envelope for your cash or check, amen. Raise your hand, that envelope will be brought to you. Is it me or y'all? Everybody had a long night. Like my grandmama said, y'all ain't gonna kill me. I want to have some fun today in the Lord. Now, if you wanna lay in your mess between you and the devil, I'm gonna lay in the arms of Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. It's where all this Bible study and Sunday school come in place now. Not if, but when you feel overwhelmed, you're supposed to be having a spirit of joy that will take you to a new place. So we're gonna try this again. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, yeah. Come on, come on, baby, y'all, y'all, come on, come on. We ain't gonna, gonna pump the pride. Come on, I can't give you what you don't have. Amen. 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 God is doing what He's doing, and those who receive it shall achieve it. Amen. 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 Y'all, remember, don't forget the first name of the priest that you do. Y'all know what y'all gotta do, amen? Cause God got a blessing with the name on it, amen? Y'all gonna sing with me? I know y'all missed me last week. Come on, let's rub it. It makes no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it. God's gonna keep it through. So don't get up.
Lord, thank you for the people who uh, gave, that were willing to give. Thank you for the people that who came. And just thank you. Let this money go to good use. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we'll have words of encouragement by Josiah. from Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 say amen when you got it 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 and could you please stand? Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in the speech and conduct in love and faith and in purity. So, I want to say this to tell you. You are brave because you fight battles every day. You are strong for holding on to life. You are special because you are irreplaceable. You are capable of doing amazing things because no one is you. You are necessary. Clap your hands for Josiah. Now we'll have another selection by our praise team. Oh, come on and clap your hands. How many know that, Lord, you are mighty? Do me a favor. Can you please stand up on your feet? Because you're warming them seats too long. Woo! Hey, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Thank you. 
by Sister Amber. And please remain standing. Today we will be coming from Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 11 through 13. When you have it, say amen. If you don't, say give me a minute. Amen. All right, y'all ready? 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, 11, of, um, verses 11 through 13. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and towards some. Towards most. Towards all men. Even as we do toward you. To, to the end and he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God even our father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all of his saints I have read to you first Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 11 through 13 about the old school church. Come on, Reverend. Pastor didn't hide what needed to be told. Today, a lot of preachers are afraid they're going to lose people because they're telling the truth. I don't know what spirit thought he could stay in here. Come on, sir. But they can't stay in here. <laughs> It was only going to stay if it feel welcome. And the only way to make it feel unwelcome is to call on the name of Jesus. So we're going to be strong. We ain't going to be long. I'm going to hit one chord and we're going to ride. Glory, glory. Yeah. 
you. And then here we move on. Amen. 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 Let's get to the word. Grab your Bibles, if you will. To the book of Matthew. Chapter 6. And I want to start with verse 30. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 6, starting with verse 30. You have it, say amen. amen. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 6, starting with verse 30. He says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or shall we drink, or whether withal shall we be clothed? For after something, most these things, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of some of these things. Most of these things? All of these things. A pilot text coming from verse 33 today. Yes, says, but seek ye last. First. First. In the middle. First. Friday when you get paid. First. <laughs> when everything is going well. First. The day after you graduate. First. The night before your wedding. First. But seek ye first the kingdom of God uh -huh. and his righteousness and some Oh. Most oh. all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, sir. You may be seated. Amen. You went on unto our God, his son that died on Calvary's cross, to our comforter, yet still the Holy Spirit. To the best church by side of heaven. Right. Woo! To our guests today, we pray that thus far you are experiencing the presence and the power of the Lord. Let me say that God sets the atmosphere within a place. However, he allows people to set the tone. And as you sit here today, I want you to ask yourself for a moment, did I set a tone of invitation of the Holy Spirit? If you think I'm talking about you, yeah, you're absolutely yeah. correct. Uh, for I am proud of my relationship with God. Yeah. And I refuse a person, a place, or a thing to bind my mouth from giving him up. Well, I refuse to let a situation cause me to deviate how I love the Lord. But I know we all have different levels of where we are. I come not to judge your practices, but make aware of your principles. Yeah. So, this book of Matthew, the 40th book in the Bible, first in the New Testament by order, however, the book of Mark was written approximately five years before this book. Matthew, who was a tax collector, had one experience with Jesus. And it was enough for him to say, I will follow thee. And maybe some of us are still waiting on that one true experience to say, I will follow thee. But we got to be transparent. We got so many things that are on our mind, our jobs, our, our health, our finances, our relationships, our marriages, our children, etc., cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we, instead of following God, we try to lead the drum. Well... Talk back. Go ahead, sir. When you can. Matthew holds 28 chapters, 1071 verses, 23,343 King James words. Mm -hmm. And in those words, he wants to remind us how important it is to not allow the things of the world uh -huh. to change how we said we would commit to God. Uh -huh. Come on, sir. 
But we got to be real. We, 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 we have these expectations of God, but then don't have those same expectations of ourselves. Mm. Uh, we, we come and we go. We in and we out. We up and we down. We over and over here and over there. And that's part of life. I agree. However, when everything about you begins to shift and change because something is not working in the way you would like it to work, then you are now telling the enemy that he is in charge of your life. He tells us here. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So, for a moment in time, look at your neighbor and say, Pastor's going to preach about. Pastor's going to preach about. I ain't your neighbor look at him real good. Say, Pastor's going to preach about. Pastor's going to preach about. Mine. Mine. Your. Yours. Business. business. Come on, sir. Mind your business. Mm. See, my God. If we be really transparent this morning, many of us are taking on things that other people are supposed to be dealing with. Mm. Uh, many of us are trying to carry burdens that God did not set for us to have. Well. And so therefore we come in overwhelmed to the house of God and instead of having a praise we got a problem. Mm. Instead of having a worship we got a worry. Instead of us having salvation we got sadness. Mm. So we sit here week after week after week looking for a breakthrough while we try to go through believing we can't make it. The enemy is real, my brothers and sisters. You've not seen it more than any time now on the news and on the social media. He is taking over with a rambunctious attitude. He don't got to hide no more. He ain't got to be in the closet no more. He ain't got to be in the cupboard no more. He ain't got to hide in the woods no more. He walks up and down the street devouring who that he will, and nobody seems to notice. Because it's so common now to be disrespectful. It's so common now to be angry and upset. It's so common now to be depressed. It's so common now to have suicidal thoughts and do things that you want to do and say things that you want to say. It's so common now. It's accepted now. And once sin becomes accepted, well, it's tolerable. We're okay with it. If you don't see what's happening in the world right now, well, I can be anybody I want to be but me. He opens his eyes. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And what must I do to mind my business? I'm glad you asked, Mother Bell. Thank you for being with me here this morning. What would I need to mind my business? First of all, he tells us here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. The first point is you must keep your mind on God. Mm. Kingdom business. If your mind is on God, then that's what your business is. The problem is your business is on everybody, every place, and everything that has nothing to do with God. And then when it does what it normally does, manifest in a manner that causes you to feel different about yourself, you wonder once again, how did I get here? Same devil, different level, same devil. He says, but seek ye first. Is God first in your life? Mm -hmm. I know, sir. My kids, my babies, they first. Wrong. Come on, Reverend. God gave you them kids. And right now, if DCF want to come take them, they can't. So they really ain't your kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband, my wife, they first. Wrong. You got married, you said through. Consummation of a higher power you believed in to some extent. Even if you went down to the courthouse, you didn't marry without somebody consummating it. 
So who's in charge? I want to ask you all this morning. If you had 24 hours, if you knew that the Lord was coming in 24 hours, what would you change? What would you do different in your life? Would you now begin to have a prayer life? Would you now begin to do right by people? Would you now decide that I'm not going to let that stuff worry me? Ask yourself. Because there's no guarantee any of us, including the man on the microphone, will be up in the morning. So why not just live in today? Why not just say, you know what, Lord, I don't know if you're coming to get me tomorrow. I know you didn't get me yesterday, so I'm going to just worry about what you have me to do for today. I'm going to concentrate on seeing how I can honor somebody just by living the life that you told me was acceptable. That if I give myself unto you and believe that you died for my very sins, I'm not going to worry about what's been worrying me all this time. Because if it worried me yesterday, it'll probably be there tomorrow. But that's okay. I'm going to live in today. I'm going to see God your face. I'm going to find a quality time with you. I'm going to ask that you will build me up, put me in a new mindset because I'm tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of being overwhelmed about the normal things when I got a supernatural God. I'm tired of reaching out to people, placing the things that every time I see them, they take it and never giving me. I want to be with a God that wants to put me in a mindset of telling me, no, he trying to slay me. Yes, will I live because I Wow. That's what kingdom business is. What does it take to be a kingdom? It takes a belief system. Yes, sir. And we have a belief system. In John 3.16, he said, For God the, the foundation of why we are who we say who we are. So I'm asking you, who are you this morning? I know what you say. I know what you do. But I'm asking, who are you this morning? My God. Come on, Reverend. Who are you? Mm. Are you a believer? Mm. Second of all, the kingdom, you need people. Mm -hmm. Moses spoke in Exodus chapter 5 and told him, let my Ask yourself, do you ask God? Lord, I need you to get me to a new level. I can't keep doing this. Round and round and go. Round and round we go. Round and round. Y'all don't understand? Y'all don't know what the church The most holiest. <laughs> Sanctified to the toll sign. And know they bust the club all white party. We did our thing. Wasn't no part of the standing yeah. merch showing up. <laughs> but he even said, let my people go. And maybe you need to start going in your house, taking some of this nice sweet oil right here, anointing your doorways, anointing your front door, anointing your cars, anointing your kids, anointing your family, and saying, devil, you let my household go. You let my family go. You let my people go. You let me go because I serve a God who's going to take me to the next level. Do I got to leave two blood watch believers that say, devil, mind your business because my kingdom is kingdom business. circular manner mm -hmm. and the goal was to make sure that they could see everything that was going on around them yes. uh -huh. and they placed a guard at those places uh -huh. that they could give a shout if something was there that shouldn't be there All right. All right. if something was coming that shouldn't have been coming mm -hmm. here's the problem sister Gwen every now and then they had a guard on duty 
who had a rough night or had a rough morning or had a rough afternoon. So Rick, he fell asleep on duty. And before he knew it, the enemy was upon him. And I stopped by to tell some of us today, we done fell asleep on what's really going on in our life. And now the enemy has showed up at our gate and we don't know how to let him come in and know that he has no presence. He may have a presence but no power here. And so we're finding ourselves overwhelmed about him being around us. But I stop by to encourage you that if you just reach down deep inside and find some kind of a praise in your mind, in your body, in your spirit, to say, I will not let the things of the world continue to take over my life. Not this day, not tomorrow. I'm going to work on it now. So the Bible tells us here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But well, wouldn't the kingdom of God be righteous already? Why would they separate the righteousness from the kingdom? Because sometimes we think we're doing kingdom work because it has a form of godliness come on sir we dress a certain way it looks like we hold it uh -huh. we show up through the week it looks like we hold it uh -huh. we bring a little notepad look like we write notes it looks like we hold it but we put none of this to practice mm. we put none of this to the places that needs to be involved in. And then not if, but when the enemy comes to us, we get bullied every time. In his righteousness, he's saying here, keep my mind on God, mind my business. Now he's saying, keep my mind on ministry. Well, <laughs> because that is something that will help me not just do what's right, but believe what I'm doing is righteous. Mm -hmm. See, in, in, the, in the corporate circular world, you either got two ways you can do wrong. It's either considered inappropriate or criminal. Right? But you can do a lot of inappropriate stuff that may not give you criminal. But the question is, is it holy? Even when you do good things, that doesn't mean that it's holy. If God has not directed, guided you, and protected you in it, therefore, where is the holiness? Mm -hmm. It was a good thing that you did, and it works on paper, but that doesn't make it holy. And there are a lot of good people on their way to hell. Well, yes. Because everything good ain't godly, but everything godly is good. Y'all catch it on. Right. He says, mind your business. Keep my mind on God. Keep my mind on ministry. Now let me help you with ministry. I don't want you trying to do the work. I want you doing the word. But if you don't know the word, you're not going to keep doing the work. Mm. Amen. If you want to know why you're falling off, it's because you're trying to do the work without the word. But in reality, the word does the work. When you're having a fallout, it ain't about the work. I mean, about the word, it's about the work. When y'all ain't getting along, ain't nothing we got to do with God. It's your own personal issue. Can we be transparent this morning? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But if you know anything about true righteousness in God, it's about self-evaluation, not evaluation of others. How much self-evaluation do you really do? And just because you write, don't make you righteous. But it's his fault. Okay. But you was waiting on it. You couldn't wait. You was egging it on. You was asking for it. 
It was a trap from the get go. I'm by myself. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Talk about it. <laughs> You got to know when the enemy knows what creeps at you, what he's going to bring to you to cause you have a second guessing about how you chose to be living for God. Mm. Wow. That's why I tell people, don't try to be happy. Try to obtain joy. Mm, yeah. Because you can be unhappy at any time in your life. Well, but joy is saying, I may not be happy about what's going on, but I'm joyous in knowing God's still going to take care of me. I know he's still going to look after me. I know he's still going to give me some place to stay. I know he's going to still put clothes on my back. I know he's still going to put food and water in my mouth. I know he's going to bless me when I need to be blessed. And he's going to get on me when I need to be got on. Do I got any blood in my belief that can least wave their hand and say, my your business. And so, he says at the end, he says, and all these things shall be added unto you. He's talking about mind your business. Keep your mind on God. Keep your mind on ministry. Now he's saying, keep your mind on the miracles. Listen, brothers and sisters. Anything God has added to you, We feel like it's more than you can handle. Mm -hmm. But I stopped by to tell you. Mm -hmm. Come on, Ray, Ray. He gave it to you because the person sitting next to you couldn't handle it. So you just got to ask yourself, mm -hmm. while I'm in what I'm in, mm -hmm. cover me, Lord. Because I know if you got me in it, you're going to get me out of it. Put your hands together for the Lord. Today. Come on, for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you for being who he is. I want to give the opportunity that you may say, you know, I do not, did not have the chance to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my Savior. And I would like to give my life unto him. Because right. I believe now that the business I've been mining has been wrong. Yeah. And I want to mine the business of the Lord. Yeah. So I can stay out of auntie business. And I can stay out of my brother's business. I can stay out of my wife and my husband's business. I just want to deal with God's business. And from that, I can deal with my auntie and my brother, my husband, my wife, my children. If you'd like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, won't you come? Why there's still time. Maybe you say, you know what, I know the Lord for myself. There I said, I I'd like to be a part of this church. They seem a little down today, but all the weeks I've been coming, they've been shouting, hallelujah, and today we ask who died. But that's okay. He's still here. He's still in charge. Every now and then, God brings you back to a level. We got to get you hungry again. Maybe the food been too filling. I've been too fat. Falling asleep on the goodness that you've been doing for me, Carl. So maybe he's going to say you this. I hear you holding on. Since you weren't satisfied with the feast, here come your family. I'm not quite myself. I'm openly admitting it. And I'm lacking in any and all that I said I would do for you. I need you to remove from me these covetous, jealous, 
suicidal, depression, anger, animosity, selfish, whatever it is, hold me, God. I need to come to you. I need to be honest. I need to be true. It's not about impressing anybody. It's about me getting my breakthrough. Because God, I want you to use me tomorrow. skip over me today because I was not in a position to hear your love to regurgitate it back to those who are going to be in need on my way home help me Lord I'm honest today I'm in a struggle and I don't want to go through a stronghold I need you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Those that can and will just raise your hands in the sign of submission. Lord, we come today as honest as we know how. Father, we come to tell you that for some reason we have not given you the honor that you truly deserve today. Including me, Lord, I have the microphone. I say today, God, I gotta do greater with you. I gotta appreciate you more, Lord. Lord, I, I, I want to be great because I want to stay grateful. Teach me, God, about being grateful for everything you've done, everything you're doing, and everything you're going to do. God, you know what we need. And I ask right now that you would come in like the Pentecost itself as a mighty rushing wind. Sweep this place. Remove all spirits that don't belong. Place us with cloven tongues and fire upon our hands to do your work, to do your will, to do it your way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. this other church because they're in need of greater and I want to believe we're a church that can help bring that to them and really in greatness hold on this is in between good and great good people do just enough 
to look good. Great people know they're not at their best, but they give whatever they got anyway. I need your best today. Let's pray. Father God, today we thank you. You know what's happening in each of our lives. Lord, we still say we love you. And we're excited about what you're getting ready to do with us. Yet, honest, we're going to be honest today, Lord. From the head leader down to the smallest baby. We need your intuition to come into our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. Build us afresh. And so as we stand in the closing of prayer, in the grace of our God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide, henceforth now and forevermore. We all say amen. 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 Love somebody before you leave today. God bless you. God keep you. God be with you.